I believe God can do anything. He can take thousands of women from all over with all different backgrounds and all different stories and unite us to be a powerful force on the earth. This year is a year like no other. God is doing something new on the earth. This year at Women of Faith, get ready to open your heart and your Bible. At Women of Faith, we are messy, everyday, real women who's had the awesome opportunity to have Jesus touch us right where we're at. And we tell our stories, the good, the bad, and the really bad. That's when finally Angie Smith spoke and it was just amazing to hear her words of encouragement and just her wisdom. It's just awesome how like God just uses certain people and just certain words for somebody in the audience and that day it was meant for me. But unless you recognize the value of today, you will never deal with yesterday and you'll never step into tomorrow. Going to Women of Faith for the first time just completely floored me. I had no idea of what to expect at all. Because I was invited to a Women of Faith event, I was just so excited about inviting other women for them to have an opportunity, just like I had to encounter a real, true, living God. Music is one of those wonderful gifts that's eternal. It's one of those things that we will take with us into the presence of Christ. Good morning. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, welcome to this time of worship as we celebrate Christ on this gorgeous Sunday morning. Glad you're here, uh, worshiping in spirit and in truth. Uh, special welcome to those who are visiting with us. We're glad you're here. If all would please sign the registration pad in the P rack. Let us know uh, who you are that we may greet you by name after worship. We are uh, offering a, a new membership class right after this service in room 211, which is right next to the kitchen, if you want to come down and join, and then we'll be receiving new members uh, next Sunday on the, on the 25th, and we'll have a reception uh, for our newest members as well. Uh, a lot going on in the life of the church. Please note everything in the Bolton. I did want to say one thing. Uh, last week, we had quite a celebration here Sunday night at uh, 7 o'clock, we had the blessing of the animals. We had 44 animals and 61 adults. It was a hoot. It was a lot of fun. We had uh, dogs, cats, gerbils, and four rats. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, they're all God's children. So uh, uh, it's all good, but please uh, take a look at everything in the Bolton and uh, a lot of things starting to come up. Rally Sunday is coming up September 8th. A lot of fun for the kids and for everybody in the family. Uh, youth is starting up on the 8th, and so a lot of great things. With that, let's greet one another in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ.
Let us all join together in the call to worship as printed in your bulletin. opening prayer. God, giver of every perfect gift, open our eyes to your glory. Nourish our faith so that we may be strong to fully witness your good news to the world. Help us to believe where we have not seen and guide us through our years with your mighty word. Amen. Let us now join together in hymn 133. This morning, we have the privilege of giving to our, some of our children uh, Bibles. Bi the, the Holy Bible is the most read book in all the world. It's even published more than Harry Potter, which is an amazing feat. Uh, but what's contained in this book is everlasting life, or the witness of, of everlasting life. And so um, I'd like to ask, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to list all the names, and if any one of the children are here, please come forward. Bristol Bachman, uh, Lorena Clemens, Liana Gonzalez, Mariah Fields, Trevor Reimer, Trent Stilwell, Juliana Crum, and Sydney Douglas. On behalf, of, on behalf of Fields United Methodist Church and the whole congregation, we're going to give you these books, read them, 
enjoy them, and really celebrate all the words that are in. There's a lot of neat stories in there, but most importantly, it's a story about our Lord Jesus Christ, and there's nothing better uh, than, than, than knowing that story. That's going to carry on the rest of your life. So let's pray. Lord God, bless these Bibles, bless these children who will be reading them and absorbing your word. Uh, bless them with, uh, with faith and spirit and hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you. That's a neat Bible. My first Bible was about that big and about that high. And didn't, didn't know what to do with it. So that was a, that was a good thing. Well, there's a lot of joys in the house this day. The, the joy of new beginnings, the joy of, of some have already started school, so we, we do pray for them and also for the teachers who, if they haven't started with the kids, they've all, already started in the classroom, so we need to pray, pray for them as well. Um, again, we, we celebrate uh, the great time we had with all our animal friends last week and, uh, and all our human friends as well. They, they, they were very good pets to the pets, and so that was good, good stuff. Um, uh, a lot of great things are happening, and a lot of good things will be coming up in the life of the church, too, and so we want to celebrate those. But in the midst of celebration, there are many concerns we need to lift up, and please note those on the prayer list. We have quite a few this week, and if you would also include Carrie Nash and also Jeanette McKenzie. Are there other joys or concerns of the church here this morning? Just please keep continue praying for my cousin's husband, Matt Charlton. He's in extreme pain and very depressed, and we're really concerned about that. Continue prayers for Matt. Are there others? Please pray for our neighbor, Liza Hamilton Laticus. She passed away Friday morning. The family and friends of Lila? Liza. Liza, okay. I have joy and praise. Uh, today, my oldest grandson is graduating from Word of Life Bible Institute on his journey into the ministry. And in about three weeks, his younger brother will be joining him in the same journey. All right, celebration. <laughs> We have a friend in West Virginia, Tommy Warburton, and uh, he's undergoing cancer removal from a growth behind his lung. So that'll be happening at the end of this month, the beginning of next, and uh, pray for him and his family. And uh, we are all with him. Thank you. Prayers for Tommy. Uh, my friend Karen Jarabic um, has cancer. She's been fighting it for six years, and they told her yesterday that she no longer, chemo isn't working, and she needs to be in hospice. So please pray for her. And then for my um, son-in-law, Tom Gabram, and my daughter, Holly Gabram. My son-in-law is a principal at Kinston, and my daughter, Holly, is a uh, teacher at West Giaca. Pray for them for a good year. Okay. Anyone else? A co-worker has started chemo and she's, you know, adjusting to that. So prayers for her. Her name is Kathy. Prayers for Kathy. Good morning. Earlier this summer, I asked for prayers for our nephew, Jimmy, who had fallen off a bike and broke his arm. Well, the plate in it broke, the bones never healed, so tomorrow he has to have more surgery. So pray that it works this time, and that maybe he has do something stupid that he might have done. 
<laughs> Continue prayers for Jimmy. <laughs> Anyone else? I'd like to um, bring up my cousin Mark. He is, um, he's got whooping cough. Despite mm. having had the, um, the immunization in 2009, and he's extremely sick, and he's in a new job, and it's under 90 days, and they're afraid that they're going to let him go because it's a, uh, but he's been out of work for a couple of weeks now, so, and is really miserable. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Let us then go to God in silent prayer. Gracious and everlasting God, author of our salvation through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we gather in your house this day as your children. We're all children, Lord God. We're, we're children that uh, conceived by you, created by you, and redeemed by you, Lord God. Uh, you, have, uh, you have died for each and every one of us that we may have a new beginning in life. And what a joy that is, the joy of knowing that no matter where we've been, no matter where, what we've done, no matter who we are, Lord God, you are with us even to the end of the age. And grace upon grace upon grace upon grace. And Lord, we give you thanks for that. Lord God, we, we gather here also with joy, uh, with all the great things that are happening in the life of this congregation, in our community. In, in our lives. We give you thanks for, for blessing us so richly with so many wonderful things. And Lord, uh, as, our, as our schools begin uh, uh, to be open here this, this fall and in the summer, we pray for our teachers and our administrators and all the support staff. And we also pray for the children going to school, Lord God, that they may be safe from harm, uh, that also that they may uh, learn a lot of good stuff uh, while they're in school. And Lord, we, we pray also for parents. And some parents the first time sending kids to school and some uh, the last year sending kids to school, Lord. And it's all kinds of changes going on, so we pray for parents and families as well. Uh, Lord God, we, we do lift up to you all those who are struggling in our world, especially the uh, folks in the Middle, Egypt, uh, Middle East and Egypt and in that region of the world. Lord God, we just pray for peace and we, we pray for um, um, wisdom, uh, too, Lord. Uh, Lord, we pray for our great nation uh, and our leaders. We pray for our communities and our community leaders. Lord God, we, we also pray for those who can't be here this day. We, we pray for those who are homebound, hospitalized. We pray for those that, that are just angry or frustrated or anxious or just not sure where they're at faith-wise, Lord God. We just pray that your redeeming grace and, and Holy Spirit rest upon them. And we pray also for those who are bitter, and we just pray that uh, uh, joy will, will intercede um, in their lives. Lord God, we pray for those who have lost loved ones this day, especially for the family and friends of Liza and all those others, Lord God, who are, who are mourning the loss of loved ones this day, Lord. May their mourning... Uh, turn to joy with a certain hope of everlasting life for the ones they have lost. Lord God, we also lift up to you Tommy and Sharon and Georgia, for Amy and Wayne and Jean, for Bill and Stacy, for Kurt and Herman and Tommy and Holly, uh, for Karen and Kathy and Zach and Chris, for Matt and Janet, for Shirley and Sharon, for Jim and Don and Carrie, uh, for all those others, too, Lord God, that we've lifted up to you, uh, both by voice and deep within our hearts. Lord God, we pray that you heal their bodies and nourish their faith. Set them all rejoicing, knowing that you are with them now, even to the end of the age. And now, Lord God, we pray for each other and for ourselves, that we may be enlivened by your Holy Spirit to do uh, all those things that you have called us to do in your name. We ask these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray boldly together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture for this morning is from the Old Testament, the book of Isaiah, chapter 5, verses 1 through 7. If you would like to follow along in your pew Bibles, it's on page 678. Isaiah was a prophet who was warning the people of Jerusalem against wickedness. And shortly after this, he, he, the, yeah, the people of Babylon, they, the people were uh, punished by being forced to Babylon. Or were taken over by the Babylonians, anyway. The chapter I'm reading is dealing with the song of the vineyard. I will sing for the one I love a song about his vineyard. My loved one had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He dug it up and cleared it of stones and planted it with the choicest vines. He built a watchtower in it and cut out a wine press as well. Then he looked for a crop of good grapes, but it yielded only bad fruit. Now you dwellers in Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more could have been done for my vineyard than I have done for it? When I look for good grapes, why did it not yield, why did it yield only bad? Now I will tell you what I am going to do to my vineyard. I will take away its hedge and it will be destroyed. I will break down its wall and it will be trampled. I will make it a wasteland, neither pruned nor cultivated and briars and thorns will grow there. I will command the clouds not to rain on it. The vineyard of the Lord Almighty is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah are the garden of his delight. And he looked for justice, but he saw bloodshed, for righteousness, but he heard cries of distress. These are the words of Isaiah. Let us now rejoice as we share our blessings with the Lord.
thank you, Lord God, for the privilege of serving you with the gifts we now lay before you. Bless them and multiply them to your ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Hello, everybody. I want to introduce you to a small portion of the contemporary worship team that has assembled recently in the previous months, uh, beginning in the summer. Our name is Common Union as a group. And for those of you that are familiar with us, we, we invite you to once again allow us to be a minister of a ministers of praise for you but the name common union we we broke the word communion into but we know that when we commune with one another it's it's a unity that comes in the opposite way people coming together as one and that's one of the things that we wanted to do so i want to introduce you to my right here is miss colleen douglas and you guys know mr richard lover he's been a part of the praise team for a long time um, Kathy Rohde, who sang last week, is also a member of it, as well as Janet Baker and some other instrumentalists that we have. Judy has joined us, Judy Pomeroy has joined us most recently, and it's just been a wonderful opportunity. So we just wanted to share with you the gifts that God has given us, and more importantly, minister to you through song. The song that we're about to do is, it's powerful, because we get caught up in the day-to-day -day hustle and bustle of life, and it just seems like we're like a gerbil in a cage. We're not getting anywhere, amen? amen. And problems mount, struggles keep coming, yet one thing that we can rely upon is that we've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Pastor Tom asked us to pray for the situations in Egypt, and oh my goodness, time does not allow us to talk about all the news that is going on, but today we just want to sing unto you about the great news that happened to each and every one of you as individuals, and that's that you've all been redeemed by the blood of Christ. So here we go. I don't have to be 
got a new name, a new life, I'm not the same. Hope that will carry me home. I am redeemed. You set me free. So I'll shake off these heavy chains, wipe away every stain. Common Union, you know, they, uh, as, a, as the worship leader in the second service, I'm so proud of these folks. They, they've been, uh, they, all of them volunteer their time. Uh, sometimes twice a week they practice, and you can tell. And it's just been a tremendous, a tremendous joy uh, to have them apart. Uh, this morning, there's another joy, uh, the blessing of the book bags. And if anybody has a book bag and they'd like to come up and have blessed, come on down. And I think something special starting, isn't there? Should ask the teachers to bring their book bags too. Just put them right down there. Well, they're awful nice looking. So what do you put in them? School supplies and books maybe? Maybe? Yeah, all kinds of stuff. Well, that's going to... Have you all started school yet? No? When's it start? Next week? Two weeks? Yeah. yeah. That's really going to be fun. School is a blast because you learn all kinds of new things. But in the book bags is where you, where you bring homework home, and that's the most fun. Because if, when you do... It is. When you do homework, you get... <laughs> It really is, Bristol. It really is. Uh, because when you do homework, you really get to know uh, what your teacher is teaching you. Then you can go in the next day and show your teacher what you know, and your teacher is going to say, oh, what a beautiful job. All because of what, you're, what, what you brought home in your book bag. So I'm going to bless these book bags and then hang around for a few minutes because we'll have a, a children's chat too. Uh, Lord God, we, we pray your blessings upon these book bags and what they contain, and especially the children who wear them. Uh, bless them mightily with, with wisdom and, and, and have them have fun this, this school year. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, while we're all standing around, uh, I'm going to talk to these folks a little bit about faith in a few minutes. You know what faith is? Trust? Yeah, yeah, it's trust. What else? Don't know. Faith is, faith is knowing something's there and you don't even see it. That's what faith is. And, and can't, but you can't, sometimes you can see faith. Do you know how you can see faith? In other people. When they come and worship God and you see the smiles on their face when they, when they, have, when they, when they praise God or when they hear a wonderful uh, tune like we just heard and, and hear all that stuff. And, and, that, and, that's, and that's a sign of, of God's presence and trust. Yeah, so faith is, faith is just knowing something's there whether, uh, whether you see it or not. And we have faith in Jesus. We may not see Jesus standing right here, but we know Jesus is here. And that's, and that's the important thing about our faith. Let's pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for, for being here. We give you thanks for giving us the faith to know that you're with us always, even on the way to school and especially on the way home. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thanks for coming up here this morning.
They really didn't buy the homework thing, but I tried. <laughs> Let's pray. Lord God, open our hearts and minds by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, that as the scripture is read and your word is proclaimed, that we may be filled with joy, renewal, and the salvation of our souls. Now, Lord God, may your word come through me or in spite of me. Thank you, Lord God, for yet another opportunity for us to try to get it right. In Jesus' name, amen. Scripture reading is from the letter to the Hebrews, the 11th chapter, beginning in the 29th verse. By faith the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land, but when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell after they had be, uh, been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient, because she received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fail to mean to tell it of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, and Samuel, and the prophets, who went through faith, conquered kingdoms, and ministered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched the raging fires, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging, and even chains and imprisonment. They are stoned to death, they are sawn in two, they are killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and in holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better, so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. The letter of the Hebrews is an amazing letter, and if you read it, uh, some say that it began as a sermon. So this was someone's sermon that they preached, Apollos, quite possibly. You can hear that, you can hear that zeal, you can he hear that affirmation. C.S. Lewis once wrote, I believe in Christianity as I believe that the sun has risen, not because I see it, but because by it, I see everything else. Faith. This term we hear bantered around all the time, especially in church. I have faith. I have faith in this, faith in that. Then comes the skeptic. So what do you have faith in? And the obvious response would be, according to Hebrews, why, I have faith in the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things unseen. And the response would be, right. You mean, you have faith in something you don't see. And you can't verify. So you see the whole world. The whole world based on something that can't be seen. You talk about risk. Faith is probably the riskiest business there is. And to many, that risk is far too much. Do we risk faith in Jesus Christ? Do we risk faith in others for the sake of the gospel? No, many would say it's too much. Because we have to have identifiables. We have to have something that's recognizable. We have to have something in our lives that's verifiable. Right? Maybe. Maybe not. The greatest scientific achievements in the world started with the unverifiable 
and the unseen. Someone had the silly notion that if small un, uh, unseen particles could move quickly through a copper wire, it could light up the night. Have you seen electricity? You know it's there. Faith then may well be, according to scripture, an unseen conviction. So though I tend this morning, it can be seen, and faith can be verified. This morning we handed children Bibles. The most amazing book, as I said before, that the world has ever conceived. Within it are stories of people of faith. I mean, you heard from the, from the letter to the Hebrews, all those prophets, and they were tortured. Uh, Isaiah was sawed in two, and all these things were happening because they had faith in something they did not see, but know existed, as one of the children said, because there was trust. Undying trust. Faith may be revealed in the book. But guess what? It doesn't magically jump off the page as you read it. Theologian John MacArthur wrote that hell will be full of people who thought highly of the Sermon on the Mount. You must do more than that. You must live it. You see, the thing about the Word of God is it's, it's not good enough to read it. It's not good enough to know it. It's not good enough to memorize it. You need to live it. It needs to be part of your life. It needs to be absorbed by every ounce of your body. You need to live the Word. The Word that was made flesh and dwelt among us. You see, saints, God is calling us to take the revelation of God that's seen through the, the Bible text and follow the footsteps of God throughout our lives. The witness of God's presence, according to Scripture, is verifiable faith. From the beginning, God created. We didn't come from a puddle of goo, but guess what? Even if we did, who created the goo? That's the question. God did. God created everything. Go down the creationist route if you'd like. The reality is the world is more than 6,000 years old. Just stand at the rim of the Grand Canyon and you see God's handiwork over the course of millions and millions and millions of years. You see, God's time is not chronos time. It's not human time. It's, it's kairos time. And, and one minute could be a thousand years to God. One minute could be a million years to God. It doesn't matter to God. The point is, and the point of our faith is that God created. And we can see that God created, which verifies our faith in our Creator. You see, science and religion are not separate entities at all. What stands beyond what science reveals is what remains unseen, but by faith we know it's there. You see, the book of Genesis, the very first book that the kids will read, and I'm sure they're going to take these back and start reading tonight. I really hope, I really hope and pray they do. The first book of the Bible is Genesis, and, and Genesis gives us an outline of how God created. A process by how God conceived God's work in us. Abraham saw no visible evidence of God, but, but carried forward and continued and trusted nonetheless. What our faith does, it offers us hope for a different tomorrow, offers us hope for something beyond what we see and what we conceive. That's what faith is all about. Is it verifiable? Yes. It is by faith 
that we see the invisible order of things. It's through the witness of the faithful that the faith can be verified. That was the whole point of this text this morning, that you saw the faith in others. Well, when we see the faith in others, when we see the commitment to Jesus Christ in others, we say, that's faith. I want a piece of that. I want the joy that that person has because they have faith. And I need more of it because I need faith. Because my body is hurting right now. My soul is aching right now. I'm pretty much a sinner right now. I need redeemed right now. By faith we know that will happen. By faith we know there are new beginnings for everybody that turns their sight on Christ, that trusts in the King of kings and Lord of lords. By faith we see that the physician, the scientist, have been given gifts by God to do great things. Faith in God is verified through the gifts they offer, through the wisdom they received. So when science creates, faith is verified. Faith opens the door to seeing God in all the miracles that surround us every day of our life. The miracle of new birth. The miracle of another day. The miracle of, of, of love of family, love of friends. The, the miracle of gathering together as one body. The miracle of having so many people sitting here in the sanctuary. All from different family backgrounds, right? And guess what? We all get along. <laughs> and that's a miracle. But it's a good thing. <laughs> it's faith. And know that we can come here and worship as one body. That's faith. But Bible studies, which are incredibly important, reading scripture is incredibly important, incredibly important to, to find your faith but it's only part of the equation we must also experience faith we must be within the body of Christ we must see the faith in others that our own faith may be built up we need to just have faith and trust in God as we pursue uh, other endeavors to take a risk to take a chance on someone. That's faith. You see, through God's people, faith is made real. Faith is verified. As a pastor, I feel incredibly privileged. And it's an amazing privilege in, uh, to to walk with someone whose family member is dying or to be at a bedside of a dying person and to look in their eyes and say he or she is going to be okay. And you see that, that not of faith. Say, yep, things are going to be okay. When you're with the people, when you're praying with people, when you're witnessing the good news to the people, you can see faith in people's eyes. You can see conviction in people's eyes. And it bolsters your own faith. You see, you can't do that in a vacuum. You can't do that by simply studying Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel and Hosea. You need to witness it. And when you witness it, your life is going to be changed. Faith is verified through the witness of the people. Faith is knowing that no matter what, 
God is in control. Faith is saying that, we, that God will get us through no matter how difficult a situation we might encounter. Faith is knowing that one way or the other. In the words of St. Paul, if I live or die, it doesn't matter, I'm with the Lord. That's faith. It's being convinced absolutely fully convinced that neither life nor death nor things above or things below nor angels nor rulers nor anything else in all of God's creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen? Nothing saints, will separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Every once in a while we have to be reminded of that, don't we? Every once in a while, when the stuff hits the fan, had to clean that up, we have to be reminded that nothing will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Saints, that's faith. And sometimes we need folks to remind us of that. Faith, ultimately, is knowing that the hope we feel will be realized in Jesus Christ. But again, it's not even enough to feel it. You've got to live it. You've got to breathe it. You've got to walk it. You've got to talk it. Faith is never getting over never forgetting God's presence with you. God's mighty arms that surround you every moment of your life. That's what faith is all about. And one last thing, and I'll take my leave. Faith is never taking for granted what God has done in your life or in the lives of others. Lord God, we give you thanks for the gift of faith that enlivens our souls. We give you thanks for those faithful that build our faith up when it needs lifting up. Lord God, we give you thanks for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in whom we place all of our trust and all of our hope now even to the end of the age. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us now stand and sing our closing
Now may the love of God, the peace and glory of our Lord Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit be with us all now, even to the end of the age. Amen.